Welcome to Gatsby on Goosebumps, the show in which I review every single Goosebumps book from R.L. Stein's original series. Uh, today we are looking at Goosebumps number five, The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. You know, uh, it is something of a throwback to a time in which the scariest thing in Egypt was mummies and uh, not uh, military coups or violent Islamists. Taking a look at the cover art there, I would say Tim Jacobus' work falls just short of classic on this occasion. Um, as I've explained previously on this series, I think the best cover art draws you in and makes you want to read, uh, but doesn't give too much away. Some of the scare is left to the reader's imagination. As you can see, just showing a mummy on the front cover, it really lacks a lot of subtlety. So definitely not some of Tim Jacobus' best work. Tagline reads, What Will Wake the Dead? And I'll read the blurb. Something dead has been here. Gabe just got lost in a pyramid. One minute his crazy cousin Sari was right ahead of him in the pyramid tunnel. The next minute she disappeared. But Gabe isn't alone. Someone else is in the pyramid too. Someone. Or something. Gabe doesn't believe in the curse of the mummy's tomb. But that doesn't mean the, the curse isn't real. Does it? Credit where it's due, I will sing these books' praises uh, when necessary. That is a terribly written blurb. So our story follows Gabe, who is very excited to be exploring the uh, Great Pyramid at al Giza or Giza, with his Uncle Ben, who's a famous archaeologist. Uncle Ben's just discovered a new series of uh, tunnels in the pyramid, uh, and he thinks it may lead to some amazing discoveries. So Gabe gets to look around there with his cousin Sari, and besides getting lost, Nothing really happens. Sari and Ben are, however, introduced to uh, one of Uncle Ben's colleagues, a man called Ahmed, who takes the legends of the curses that surround uh, the pyramids very seriously, particularly the legend of the curse that will uh, follow those who disrupt the tomb of the priestess Kala. Was there ever a real Princess Kala? I'm not an Egyptologist. If there are any watching, please let me know in the comments. The next day, Uncle Ben's called to the hospital because two of his workers have come down with a mysterious illness. Gabe and Sari take the opportunity to explore the local museum. At the museum, they come across Ahmed, who pretends to be working on behalf of Uncle Ben, but he only does this to try and get them in his car. He attempts to kidnap them. Fortunately, our heroes make it back alive and tell Uncle Ben what has happened. Uncle Ben reveals that the people at the hospital suffered some sort of uh, massive scare. They were in a state of shock due to something they saw at the pyramids. Uncle Ben is shocked to hear about Ahmed's actions and theorizes to go to the pyramid and sort it out once and for all, taking the children with him. Once back in the Great Pyramid, Gabe gets lost once again because children are idiots, but at least on this occasion he does manage to stumble across a sort of ancient preparation chamber filled with uh, mummies and a tar pit. Um, the only problem is all of it seems uh, quite modern. The tar in the pit is is still soft, and how can it be soft if it's an ancient preparation chamber? Sari eventually finds him, and they both come face to face once again with Ahmed. It is revealed that Ahmed and his ancestors have long protected the tomb of the priestess Kala. He was the one who scared the two workers into a state of shock, and that's why everything in the chamber seems modern, because he and his family have been protecting the tomb for generations. Uncle Ben soon joins the party and they almost make an escape, but Ahmed, the mad Egyptian, uh, catches them once more and prepares to uh, burn them alive in the tar pit as, as a punishment for uh, their misdeeds. In a moment of desperation, Gabe pulls out his summoner, and this is a small uh, Egyptian mummified hand that he bought at a garage sale. He's not sure if it's real or not. Um, and he you know, brings it out in desperation because it's his good luck charm. Turns out the summoner does what it says, and it summons all the mummies around the chamber, who are uh, almost burn armoured alive, but I think he makes it out alive. Uh, essentially, they come to life to protect Gabe and his family. And that's it, they make it back to their hotel room, uh, he pulls out the summer again, there's a knock on the door, and it's his parents. So, a rare occasion of no cliffhanger on a Goosebumps book. 
because, you know, we need a break every now and then. Our constitutions can't always take the stress. So in short, aside from the Egyptian setting, there's not a whole lot to that, that makes it that much of a spooky adventure. Not one of the worst in the Goosebumps series, but definitely not one of the best. Thank you for watching, and please join me next time in which I review Goosebumps number 6, Let's Get Invisible. Thank you for watching, and please stay spooky.